One of the key features of Vim is motions, and sometimes it's not exactly clear what each motion is going to be doing in each instance. And one of those times with the F and the T keys, which will be used to jump to a character on a line. Now, what I'm going to be looking at today is a little plugin called Vim Quickscope, which will address this problem by highlighting the character you're going to be jumping to. So if you're new to the channel, you know what to do, and let's jump right into it. So before we get into any examples, let's just have a look at the GitHub page and how to install it. So there's a little GIF on here that'll show you basically sort of how it functions. It's not a great GIF. It kind of makes more sense if you start playing around with it yourself. So when we get into example, I'll spend a bit more time actually talking about how it works. Now, if we go down to the features, what it does is it will highlight the first and the second occurrence of every character to the left and the right of your cursor, depending on which direction you're going. So if you press F or T, it'll show to the right of your cursor. If you press capital F or capital T, it'll show to the left of your cursor. So as I said, it highlights the first occurrence and it will highlight the second occurrence. Now it highlights the second occurrence in a different color, just so you know if you have to repeat the key. I'm not really sure why it doesn't do three or four characters. It, there's not really any reason why it couldn't, but I guess with this, it only wants to do the first two. And that's generally gonna be fine on most lines, as long as you don't have insanely long lines. Now, it also doesn't highlight special characters. Now, there's a very good reason for this. One, it adds way too much extra color for something that you don't really need, because typically, and this is the second reason, Typically, special characters will only appear once or twice per line, and they're usually very easy to spot. So say, for example, in this example, I've got a plus. If you just look at this line, you can pretty much identify the plus basically straight away. And same with this equal sign. So you can identify that pretty quickly. So even though it's not being highlighted, it doesn't really take anything away by doing that. So why would you actually want to run this? So my main reason, and the reason it lists here, is that you can see exactly what character you have to press to quickly jump to a word, so you don't have to guess or slow down to actually work out what you have to press. Now, if you have to slow down, that kind of defeats the purpose of jumping quickly with these motions. So, for example, what is the quickest character to press with F to jump to this word right here, so this over? If that took you more than a fraction of a second, that's too long. So if we press F, as we'll see, the first character that comes up is V. So if we press V, that jumps us there. So we don't actually have to guess which character we have to press. And that's the same for anything else on this line. So if I press F again, you can see the quickest way to get to another, obviously without searching for it, is to press A and then repeat. So let's go back to the GitHub page. Also, because the plugin doesn't actually add any new motions in, doesn't add any new bindings, anything like that, all you have to learn is how to use vanilla Vim better. So all this does is provides a way to better use vanilla Vim. So for those people who are Vim absolutists and want to do everything the vanilla Vim way, this is probably a really good addition for you. So it's not going to change anything. All it does is just makes it easier to see what you're going to be doing. So if you want to install this plugin, it's pretty easy. It's pretty easy like with every Vim plugin, just use your plugin manager. So all you have to do is copy this line right here or whichever line is relevant for your plugin manager into your plugin block. Now, obviously, if you're using a different plugin manager, make sure you customize the line for that specific plugin manager. But for Vimplug, I'm just gonna copy this line right here into here and I've already copied it in. So then obviously, if you're using Vimplug, you would open up a new Vim buffer. So nvim and you would go plug install. Run that, just let it install, and there you go. Now you'll have it installed. So one thing I should probably also mention is there's a couple of things you can configure with this program. So let's have a quick look at those. So if we go down to Quickscope, now one of the things you're probably not going to want to do, but you can if you really want to, is you can disable which keys Quickscope actually runs on. So by default, it's going to run on F, capital F, T, and capital T. But if for whatever reason you don't want it to run on, say, capital F, and capital T, then you can disable those. I wouldn't recommend it because that kind of defeats the purpose of this plugin. But if you do want to do that, then that is an option for you. Now, another thing you probably are going to want to change is the highlighting colors. So by default, it's going to try to pull something from your theme. Maybe your theme will support this, but I really doubt it. So what you're going to want to do is run this line right here. So highlight, quick scope primary, and then the colors you're going to want to set. So primary is for the first color and secondary is for the second color. So if you're using a terminal that supports true color, you can use the GUI foreground color. So I've got it set to this bright green here. 
And then you can also do things like GUI equals underline, GUI equals bold. So what that's going to do is basically underline the text, bold the text. I don't think italics work in most terminals, but you can do underline and you can do bold. If you're not using a terminal that supports true color, so some true color terminals are things like Kitty, Alacrity, uh, ST, terminals that support proper color rendering. Everything else supports a far more limited color palette. Generally for those, the C term options are going to work. So my color is set to C term foreground 155. I believe I actually took these settings directly from, yeah, I took these settings directly from the GitHub page. So I presume this 155 is fairly equivalent to this bright green and this 81 is fairly equivalent to this bright blue. But you might want to test those yourself if you do use a terminal that doesn't support true color. Now, if you are going to be using the true color option, so the GUI colors, you have to do set term GUI colors. Now, if you're using something else that already works with true color, you've probably already enabled this. So if you're using like Vim, Hexokina, say to do color highlights, then you've already got this enabled. But if you don't, then it will fall back to the C term colors, even if you do have a terminal that does support true color. One thing I should also mention about these colors here is you don't have to just use foreground. If you'd prefer to have background highlighting, all you have to do is just change this to BG. You can include foreground and background as well if you want to. I just like using foreground because I think it adds a bit too much color if I have both of them. So I think that's pretty much everything for that. One last thing to mention is if you want to disable the plugin, and there's a couple of, actually there's a couple of other things to mention. If you want to disable the plugin, you can run Quickscope toggle. So colon quick scope toggle. You can also limit the plugin on long lines. So if you don't want it to run on lines that have more than 80 characters, you can include this line as well. You can disable certain sort of buffers. So that's how you would do that. And you can change the accepted characters. I would recommend leaving this as it is, but if you do want to add special characters in, then I believe you can add special characters into this list as well. We'll come back to this in just a moment because there's a few examples in here that are pretty useful. So for now though, let's just have a look at how the plugin actually works because it's been like six minutes and I haven't even talked about that. So if I press F, we'll see that it starts highlighting some characters. Now, there is a reason for the way it highlights certain characters and I'll go over those in just a moment. So as we'll see, the first characters are highlighted in green and the second characters are highlighted in blue. So what about for over right here? So as we'll see, it actually has a letter that appears only twice up to this point. So why isn't the O highlighted and the V is highlighted instead? Now this plugin will prioritize the quickest way to move to a word. So in this case, yes, you could get to over by pressing F and O and then semicolon to repeat it. Or the quicker way to get there is by pressing F and then pressing V. So it prioritizes the quickest way to get to a word. So if we press F now, we'll see that the letters that are highlighted later in the line have now changed. So now the quickest way to get to another is no longer to press A and then to repeat the motion with semicolon. It's now just to press N straight away. So if we press N, that will get us to the word. So press F again, it will change a bit more. So you can go backwards in the line. So if we go to the end of the line, so if we press capital F, we'll see that the highlighting is actually different from when we we're at the start of the line. So for example, with Fox, so when we're at the start of the line, the quickest way to get to Fox was by pressing F. Now it's to press F and semicolon. And the reason for that is because the order that we're actually seeing the characters is different. So at the start, you were seeing them from left to right. Now you're seeing them from right to left. So as I said, the quickest way to get to Fox is by pressing F and then repeating the motion with semicolon. So this isn't directly related to the plugin, but you might know that you can reverse the direction of a motion by pressing comma. So for example, let's say we are in over right here and we press F and we press O, but what we actually wanted to do was press capital F and press O to jump to Fox. What we can do here is two different things. So if we press capital F, then we can jump to Fox straight away. So that's two key presses, or your other option is to press comma and press comma. So it depends on just how you want to work. Both will work. Sometimes it's going to be a bit further away than that, depending on the sort of characters in your line, because maybe there's no way to jump directly to this word without doing the backwards motion. So that's just something to keep in mind when you're working. So you can actually reverse the direction you want to go if you do make a mistake like that. One last thing I should probably mention is the difference between F and T. Now this isn't directly related to the plugin, but it is useful to actually using it properly. So if we press F and we press J, this will jump us to the point where we're actually highlighting the character. 
And if we were to press instead T and we press J, that jumps us directly before the character. Now, I did just remember another thing I should probably mention. So you might have noticed I actually had a spelling mistake on this line, and that was actually entirely on purpose. So if we just fix this back up, what we'll notice is that this plugin doesn't exactly play nicely with Vim Hexokina say. Now I'm not sure if it's just because of the order the plugins are being loaded, or if one of them's being started before the other. I'm not really sure. I've tried to move stuff around and get it working, but for some reason it hasn't fixed it. So I'm not really sure why that's happening. I guarantee there's going to be some really easy way to fix it, but I'm not sure right now. So for now, I'm going to say it doesn't work properly with it, but it is only changing the color scheme. So there's got to be some way to fix it. But anyway, if we press B, that will still work. It just doesn't highlight it properly. So that's just a little bit annoying. I'll try to think of a solution for that and then I'll let you guys know about it. If you'd like a bit more information about how to use Vim Motions and how to just use this plugin in general, on the GitHub page, all the examples I went through are available here. And also for some reason, the developer decided to include some other stuff about random other Vim Motions. I don't know why they're on here, but I guess come check this out if you want to. I will leave a link down below to the GitHub, so go check that out, I guess. So I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to talk about in this video. For some reason, I really struggled to string sentences together today. As you just noticed there, apparently I can't just say basic words. Anyway, I'm not going to cut that. So if you like this video, then remember to smash that like button and leave me a comment down below to let me know what you think. If you want to see more videos like this, then remember to subscribe and ding the little bell icon down below because it'll really help the channel out. I'm now aiming for 10,000 subs and any help be really appreciated. Up on that corner, I've got the playlist this video's in, so go check that out if you want to see other videos like this. Down below, I've got my social links, so that'll be my Discord, my Telegram, and all that sort of stuff. So go check that out if you want to chat with me or you want to get video updates. I've also got my support links down below, so that'll be my Patreon and various other links like that. So go check that out if you do want to support the channel. But as always, if you don't want to, then you don't have to, but any help will be really appreciated. And lastly, I've got my alternate video platforms. So that'll be my BitTube and my library. So yeah, as I mentioned before, I don't know why I was struggling to record today. So I'll just bring this over. I've got my recordings on a separate window. These are all of the recordings just for today's thing. And it's like a 10 minute video. This is how bad I am at speaking. So that's just a bit of behind the scenes stuff for you guys. So that's, that's typically why there's so many jump cuts. Because I really struggle to string a sentence together. I know it doesn't come across like that as badly in my podcast and when I do like my vloggy stuff. But when I'm doing more technical stuff where I have to stay on point, I kind of get distracted very quickly. When it's a vlog or something like that, I can just do whatever I want. If I go off on some random tangent, it doesn't really matter. And this is what's happening right now. Because I can just go off on some random tangent, it doesn't matter, but when I'm doing something very technical, I really struggle to string a sentence together regardless of how much I know about it. So that's just a bit of fun about my life, I guess. So I think that's pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.